Hi and welcome to the fifth episode of Comadreando. Hola, comadres. I am your host, Marcy, and we have a very special guest here today, Felicia. I will let her introduce herself. Who are you? Hello, comadres. I am Felicia. I am a mother of a 12-year-old boy. I'm a daughter. I'm a paralegal. I am 34 years old. And I think that's everything. She's also a mommy chula, like your host. <laughs> and that's, yes, I did and that's that. how we know each other. <laughs> um, so today's topic is very important, uh, as are all of them. But we're going to be talking about birth stories. Um, the reason why the topic came up, a lot of people ask me what it was like when I was pregnant with my son. And when Aiden gets his evaluations, they actually ask me about whether or not there were any complications during the pregnancy or anything like that. I feel like that's um, something that should be talked about. And um, you can also touch on prenatal care and things like that. Uh, so tell me about your birth story with your son Charles, comadre. Okay. Um, so first of all, I was in labor for three days. So we'll start with that, like literally 72 hours. Um, so I went in for like, a, you know, I was 37 weeks. And, you know, by that time you're going in like weekly for checkups. And so I have, I was, I went for like a routine weekly checkup and, um, you know, they checked my blood pressure and it was like really high. Um, I think it was like 200 over a hundred, which is obviously really high. Um, but I was also like on the phone with my son's father and like we were getting into it. So like the nurse was like, oh, you're probably just, you know, totajita, like go outside, calm down and come back. Um, but when I went back in, like my blood pressure, my blood pressure was still really high. So then, um, you know, she took me into the exam room and, um, the OB that was there, he was like, yeah, your blood pressure is way too high. And, um, I'm just going to need you to go up to labor and delivery. And I don't know that you're going to give birth today or this weekend, but I just need you to go up there just to make sure that everything's fine with the baby. So, um, so I did, and they had actually admitted me. It was a Philly, can I interrupt? Did you have yeah. um, high blood pressure throughout the pregnancy, or was that just a development towards the end? Um, no, my blood pressure was perfectly, like, first of all, I've never had high blood pressure, like, my entire life. I was 20 years old when I, um, when I was pregnant with him. Um, and no, I didn't have high blood pressure. Like literally that was the first visit that my blood pressure was that high. Um, so it turned out I had preeclampsia, mm, okay. which one of the symptoms is high blood okay, pressure. Okay. Sorry. You could continue. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, so yeah, so that was like, it was like a Friday evening, um, like six 30. I was, like I said, I was 20 years old. I had never had a child before. So of course I call my mom freaking out. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> I think I'm going to have this baby. And she's like, what? Like, obviously, you know, she's, you know how Latino parents are. Like, they're very overbearing in general. Uh, so she's like, oh, she had to leave work and, you know, come meet me at the hospital. Um, but I did not give birth to Charles. That was on February 20th. I did not give birth to him until February 22nd, which was that oh Sunday. Gosh. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you want me to go into, like, complete details, um, but... You know, they were obviously monitoring my blood pressure. I was on magnesium, um, which is supposed help to lower it. Um, help lower it. Um, but it, it's also like a really strong medication. So they had to like put a catheter because it like makes you dizzy. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I had okay. that. That was really fun. Um, not. Um, and yeah, like I couldn't even eat like that entire three days. Like I was like chewing oh on my, my God. chips. Did they end up inducing uh, you? So, um, they, they gave me some medication to induce the labor. I don't know exactly what it was, but I do know that like my plug came out Friday mm. night. Um, cause like I felt it, like I was like, Oh, I think I peed mm. on myself. And the nurse is like, no, your plug mm. just came out. Um, and you know, they were like monitoring me like all Saturday and I'm just like, like, what are you, like, what are we doing? Like, I'm hungry. Like what are we doing with this child? Um, so then I, 
I want to say like Saturday evening, they start Saturday evening or Sunday morning. They started giving me Pitocin, but I think it was more s- Sunday mm-hmm. morning because usually they do that when they want to, you know, accelerate the mm-hmm. process because clearly he wasn't coming out on his own. Um, and my blood pressure still wasn't, um, like it wasn't stable. Um, like it wasn't normal. It was stable. It was like, I would say like, it probably went down to like 150, but like that was the lowest it was going. Um, so yeah, so they gave me Pitocin. Um, and I don't know if any of the comadres have ever given birth with Pitocin, but like Pitocin contractions are contractions on steroids. Yeah, we'll get into mine afterwards, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that wasn't fun at all. Um, but anyways, so yeah, I was in labor for three days and I finally gave birth to him on Sunday, February 22nd, 2019 at 6 45 PM. Um, and you know, 2019, like, I, I, I watched so many 20, did I say Girl, I was like, in that. 2000, 2009 guys, 2009. Sorry. He's 12, 2009. Um, but yeah, like I watch a lot of Lifetime movies and you know how like they always like cry when they Mm -hmm. give birth because of, you know, the, uh, what's that? Um, what's the hormone that you release? Oxytocin. Oxytocin. Yeah. So I was just like, why do, why do women cry cry when they give birth? But literally like what, after I pushed him out, like I was like a bawling cry. You were able to have him natural, even, even with the induction. That's amazing. Um, yeah, no, I had him naturally. Um, well, you know, they were pushing for me to have him naturally, um, because like they had called my mother out of the room at one point. Um, I guess whatever. I mean, I was, I was of age, so I don't even know why they were talking to her behind my back, but my mother told me this like years later that like when the doctor pulled her out, like he told her that they, the reason why they were pushing for me to have him naturally was because if they took me in for a C-section, one or both of us could oh have God. died. Like, it was that serious. So they were, like, you know, pushing for it. And thank God, not, you know, we're both here. Amen. Yes. Perfectly fine. He's 12 years old. And, um, yeah, I gave birth to him naturally. That's awesome. So after Charles was born, when they did that, like, well, baby checkup, I guess when they're, like, you know, minutes after they come out. Um, were there any complications, anything that came up? Um, well, he he wasn't breathing right away. So I think that also was why, like, I just started crying. Because it was just like, I didn't, like, he didn't cry oh right gosh. away. And I was just like, what is, like, what is happening? Um, so, like, yeah, obviously, like, he was four pounds. And he was really tiny. He was four um, pounds, 15 ounces. Like, he was so tiny. Um, yeah, and he, he wasn't breathing right away. So, like, all these, well, when I was, like, pushing him, there were already, like, I want to say three doctors, and I don't know how oh many gosh. nurses, like, in, like, in the, um, in the labor and delivery room. So, you know, once he wasn't breathing, like, they started working on him right away. And I want to say, like, within a minute or so, like, then I, like, we finally heard him cry. And it was like, mm-hmm. okay, like, everything's fine. Um. And yeah, no, like, like everything else was fine with him. He was just like premature because of his mm-hmm. weight. Like he was so small, but like I told him, I'm like, you guys starved me for three days. Like, what did you think was going to happen? You're like, of course he's going to lose weight. Um, so we had, I feel like we have kind of similar birth stories. So when I was pregnant with Aiden, um, it was overall, I, it was a really good pregnancy. Like I want to, I could count the times on my hand that I was like nauseous and throwing up. I was working at um, a bank at the time. I wasn't a teacher yet. And um, my boss is an older Puerto Rican woman, which she was like my mom. She's like, I'll take care of you. Sit down. I'll bring you the customers. Um, and all my people in the, in the bank used to take care of me as well. Um, overall, it was a pretty good pregnancy. Uh, I was in not in a great relationship so on that end I was like very stressed out for the most part um towards the end of the pregnancy however I was getting high blood pressure so that very last visit that I went to the doctor my pressure was elevated and the way that I knew is that I felt 
I don't know if you felt this really, but like like pressure in your eyes, you felt like I felt like my eyes were gonna pop out at one point. It was like really high. And um when the doctor saw that, she was like, Well, ma'am, you're gonna have to rest because she was asking me like what my job entailed and I was a personal banker at the time. So I used to have to be up on my feet, even though my boss was letting me sit. It was still like a lot of like, you know, the commute there, working with customers all day. It was pretty long hours. Um, so finally the doctor was like, Yep, that's it, you're done. Uh next week we're gonna it was like I think a Wednesday. They're like Tuesday we're gonna induce you. And actually that was election day. Um, that was the year that Obama was running against who was he running against? I forgot. It was the first time Obama was elected. And um yeah. So I went into the hospital, was it the day before? I can't remember, it was, it was the day of election day, yeah. I went into the hospital. Um, this hospital is phenomenal, it's like a hotel. So, you know, we did a pre-check-in. And then when I went there, I just had to wait for my room to be available. And I had a suite, a birthing suite by myself. And then um, I was there 28 hours. And like you, they gave me that Pitocin. Okay. And those contractions, like I was having like some cramps here and there, but once the Pitocin hit, it was a wrap. I don't even know how to describe it, but I know for a fact that when women have natural contractions, our brain produces something to help us cope with the pain. But because these are artificial, like it's coming from an artificial chemical outside of your body, basically it was like, at first it was like, I was like, I got this. I got this. I got this. And then after a few hours, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, I'm going to have to. And I wasn't dilating as much. So it got to a point that um, the contractions were coming really strong. And I was only like four centimeters and I didn't move from there. So at that point, um, and then they had me on the blood pressure monitor. Uh, the nurse turned it away from me. And I know my ex-husband was looking at the monitor and I would see his eyes like get wide because he would see like the level where it was at. I mean, my mom and him were pretty good at like keeping me like entertained and make cracking jokes. I remember my mom made this, um, I don't know if it was a medicine or whatever, but she made this joke and I still remember she said that um, she went to go look at the babies and one of the babies looked like they put the doctor's bata on him to, to wrap him. And I was like, I found that like to be the most hysterical thing. So once like, my water broke, I kept laughing and it was like, psh, yeah. psh, psh, every time I laughed, it was, it was a lot. Um, so yeah, once it started getting to like close to hour, like 27, the doctor came around and she was like, well, you know, we're, we're trying for you to have been, um, have a natural birth, but unfortunately you're not dilating. So we're going to have to put you in to have a C-section, which I didn't want. So I started crying and then, um, she's like, you know, it's, it's better for you right now. We want to make sure that you're healthy and the baby's healthy. So, and I went for my C-section and like after Obama was elected, Aiden was born on the 5th of November, which is tomorrow. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, for the most part, like in the hospital, it was so great. Cause I don't know if you experienced the same thing, but the nurses help you so much. Like I didn't even have to sleep with the baby for the first couple of nights. They would just bring him into feed. Um, yeah, yeah um, I gave perfect. I gave birth at Kings County, which is a city hospital, and it's like probably the worst hospital, like on the worst <laughs> hospital list in New York. But um, like they're they're like labor and delivery. Like I felt like yeah. a queen. Like you, I like had I had a suite by myself. Um, and yeah, like the nurses were like amazing. Um, the day that I gave birth, so like when they, well, there was one nurse that like pissed me off because, she, you know, she was the one that was coming to like increase the Pitocin. So like after like the third or fourth time, like she's like, so, you know, honey, just let me know when you're going to want the epidural. So like my original birth plan, like I wanted, I wanted like no intervention. I didn't want any pain medication. Like I wanted to give birth like naturally, like they used to do in the campo, like, you know, like yeah. naturally. So she's like, you know, let me know when you're going to want that epidural. And I'm like, no, like, I'm good. Like, and she was like, you're crazy. Like, why would you want to be in pain? And I would just look at her and like, I didn't say anything. And then when she left, like I started crying and mommy was like, are you okay? And I was just like, well, first of all, like she shouldn't have said that to me. 
Like this is not a part of my birth plan. So I'm already like deviating way far off course. And I don't need to have an epidural if I don't want any. And like, like if mm-hmm. I don't want it. And like, why would she, like, why is she trying to force mm-hmm. it on me? And my mother's like, don't even pay her no mind. Like, it's okay. Like she already left. And I'm like, no, but like, she shouldn't do that. Like she's supposed to be making me feel comfortable. So like, that's the only like bad experience I had. Like it was that one nurse, like all the other nurses were amazing. I even had like, I think the, the like a student nurse and she was like, this is going to be like my first birth. Oh so like, gosh. she was like, so she was like, so excited. She's like, this is going to be um, I mean, she wasn't the only, no, like she wasn't the only one there. Thank God. Cause if she was, I don't know how to be like, um, where's your supervisor? But she was just like, you know, she had never seen like a natural birth before. So she was like super excited. And I was like, okay, like, I I don't know, like it kind of made me feel uncomfortable. But like she was like so excited Mm -hmm. about it that like I just, it like kind of took away from like the pain that I was having, like you were saying, like, because I was like, I'm going to thug this out. (laughs) And then like, I got this. And then like around 345, like I said, I gave birth to him at 645. So like around 345, I was like. Yeah, like I have a high tolerance of pain, but this is I not know. it's a lot. So get the anesthesiologist in here. Stop. Oh, and that's another thing. Like I, yeah, I wanted to ask um, you. Like I brushed past it. So when they, um, like I was like super swollen. Like you see me, I'm like super skinny now, right now. And even when I had Charles, like I was all mm-hmm. belly. But because of the preeclampsia, like I was like swollen. Like I looked so like swollen. So the anesthesiologist came and, you know, they put you like in such an uncomfortable position to even put the epidural in. Um, like I was like hunched over. Like, it was, like, yeah. Um, it's like not a like, natural yeah, so position tried, of your, like your body yeah, goes in. I was just like, and then they're like, don't yeah, move. You're like, like, don't move. Yeah. Then he's like, don't move. Cause I could like oh paralyze you. And I'm like, well, this, I'm like, well, this isn't like <laughs> a natural position that my body would be in. Um, yeah, it was just, it was crazy. But so he tried to do it, like he did it one time and he was like, yeah, I didn't hit your spine. Oh my God. And I was just like, yeah. So then he went a second time and he was just like, you're really swollen. Like, I, I can't feel it. And I'm just like, isn't this your job? Like, what do you mean you can't find my, oh my spine? God. It can't be that hard. So then he's like, I'm going to try one more time, um, Miss Vega. I'm like, first of all, I'm 20 years old. Call me Felicia. Uh, but he's like, I'm going to try one more time. But if I, you know, if I can't, you know, insert it oh into your God. spine, like you're going to, you're going to have to just go naturally. <laughs> and I'm like, right. I'm like, bro, I've been in labor for three days. I think I could, I could last a couple more hours. Like literally mm-hmm. that's what I told him. And he was like, okay, well, I'm going to try again. I said, well, you try really hard, sir. Try really hard. <laughs> Thank God on the third try. He oh got God. it. And um, he was like, just take a nap. You know, they put the alcohol to make sure that you're actually, like, numb, like, mm-hmm. on your legs. And then he was like, all right, take a nap. And so, like, I took a nap. And then when I woke up, because I had asked my mom, I'm, I'm like, how am I going to know, like, when I'm ready to, like, give birth? She's like, honestly, you're going to feel like you have to take crap. Like, you're going to have to, like, you're going to, like, that's what it's going to feel like. It's going to feel like so much pressure down there. And I was like, really? She was like, Yeah. So whatever, I fell asleep and then I woke up and I was like, Ma, I think I'm gonna poop. She's like, No, you're dilated, like you're fully dilated. She uh-huh. called the nurse and they were like, Yep, you're ready. And I was like, Thank God. Like I was just so Oh my cool. gosh. I was like, get this baby out. Yeah, that's me. another thing. The anesthesiologist, like, that I had, he was good. He got it in on the first try, but he did I did feel when he touched one of the nerves that was not supposed to be touched. And it feels like, I don't know, like, you know, when you lose a tooth that you like have the hole and uh, all right, that's so cringy. But yeah, so, um, so Aiden actually, when he came out that they did all the check, the checkup on him, he, he was humongous, by the way, eight and a half pounds, 21 inches long. And then when they wrapped them in all those blankets that they finally gave them to you, you're like, cause you're like, you have no strength. So he felt like he was like 20 yeah. pounds. And I was like, what, whose baby is this? Um, a b- poor baby. Um, he came out all like, I don't know if that happened to Charles. He came out all swollen. Cause I guess he was like trying to come out the wrong way. So his nose was like squished up a little bit when he was born. I mean, it went, it went away, away eventually, but, um, yeah, like yeah. 
once they did the analysis on him, they found that he had um, jaundice. I mean, they didn't have to do the light therapy or anything like that, but it, um, yeah. you know, it was just he was like a, like a little ruddy brown color. I mean, he eventually went back to the color that he's supposed to be, but um, yeah, it was it was it was a very interesting experience. Um, overall, the hospital, I gave birth at Hackensack University Medical Medical Center, which is like top three in the country for medical care, and um, they were actually really really excellent. Um. You know, I had as many visitors as as long as I was awake, I could have as many visitors as I wanted. Everybody was treated really nicely. Uh, I had family come, like my aunts came to see my kid. Aiden's godfather came down. My my Aiden's godmother came down. My friends. Um, it was overall a positive experience. Uh, what was it like after you took Charles home after you gave birth? I know your mom's a big supporter of you and like gives you a hand as much as she can but what was it like uh, um and then i don't know if you want to get into kind of the thing with um charles's dad I mean, you don't have to get into details but like yeah. was he there for you after you had the baby um so after I gave birth, well, after I gave birth, we were, me and Charles were both in the hospital for four days because they put him in the NICU due to mm -hmm. his weight. Um, and now that you mentioned, I think he, he was a little, like, I think they did put the light on him for like one mm -hmm. day. He might've like been like a little bit on this, but I, I feel like I have a picture of him like with like the blue mm -hmm. light. Um, so yeah, I think he was, he, he was a little jaundiced as well. Um, but yeah, we were, we were there. Sunday I gave birth. Monday, Tuesday. I went home on Thursday. Um, and they were like, We're gonna, you know, discharge you, um, but we're gonna keep him for like a another couple of days for observation. And I was just like, Okay. Um, so that kind of sucked because I was just like, How am I like I'm going home without mm -hmm. my baby? Like this just feels weird. So um Oddly enough, I don't know why I was even enrolled in school at the time, but I thought that it was a smart idea to like register for classes being seven months pregnant. So I actually had a class that night and I was like, well, I feel good enough to oh go to class. God. So yes, I, instead of going home, I took the train to Brooklyn college and I went to, I went to class cause I had like a six o'clock class and, um, while I was sitting in class, like the hospital's calling me and I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, well, we're ready to discharge him. And I'm like, I was, I was just there. Like you guys told me you were keeping him for a couple of days. Like, what do you mean? Like, and I wasn't even like, I wasn't even ready for him. Cause like his baby shower was actually scheduled for the week oh after, gosh, he gave yeah. birth. I, after I gave birth, like it was scheduled for the 28th. Um, so, like, I didn't have, I mean, I think I had, like, you know, a couple of onesies, but, like, I didn't have a car seat, I didn't oh, have a stroller, idea. like, nothing. So, I, my mom's friend actually, like, drove, like, I like I went home, because I was like, okay, I need to go home, but, like, I don't have a car seat, because they're like, you need to bring a car seat, all, you know, all that stuff. So, my mom's like, oh, let me ask my friend, blah, blah, blah. So, her friend was like, yeah, I'll go with you, um, and... Like she, she, like her granddaughter was just born also. So she's like, you know, she basically gave me like her granddaughter's blanket. Like Charles came home in a pink Aww. blanket. Like that's how unprepared I was. But, um, so yeah, so then I brought him, that was the third, that was that following Thursday. And, um, like I wanted to breastfeed, but like he wasn't latching on. And, like, I was getting frustrated. And it was, like, really, like, really hard. Like, the, I would say, like, the first six months. I'm not even going to say the first couple of weeks. I don't know if I ever mentioned this to you, but, like, I went through postpartum depression. And, like, so, like, literally, like, I did the bare minimum mm -hmm. for him. Like, the bare minimum. Like, I, I made sure, like, his, his diaper was changed. I made sure he was fed. Like I said, I wanted to breastfeed him. He didn't latch on. Like, I, like, yo no lo iba a forzar. Like, si tú no quieres comer, a mí no me importa. Mm -hmm. Like, grab the bottle and I would give it to him. Um, like, I slept a lot. Um, like, when he slept, mm -hmm. I slept. 
Um, and my like when my parents would come home from work, they would like scoop him up and take him and like just let me sleep my life mm-hmm. away. And that's literally that was like the first six months of his life. Um his father was and wasn't involved. Um so Charles was like a hookup baby. Like I wasn't even in a relationship with his father. Um when I found out like I was pregnant and actually a month he may hear this. I mean it's not like I'm lying anyway. I don't even care. So like a month after I had Charles, like he actually was like I don't want to be with you. I want to be with some other girl. And I was just like I literally just went through nine months of like an incubation period of like growing your child. It's only been a month since I've given birth. So I think that also contributed, um, like led, like contributed to the postpartum depression. Cause it was just like, I am like the mother of your child. Like, I feel like, you know, there should just be a, like more, more feelings here. Like, this is not how I intended. Like, you know, my first pregnancy or even having a child like to be. So it was, it was really hard. And then I don't know why, but like Charles came out looking exactly like his dad. Um, he does not look like him Mm -hmm. anymore. Um, but like he did. And so like, I think that's another reason why, like I couldn't bond with him because I was just so angry at his father. And then I would look at him and he looked exactly like his father. And it was just like, I don't want anything to do with this man and my child looks exactly like him. So it was hard. Yeah. Um, I can yeah. imagine, man. It It's <laughs> it's very... People don't... I feel like some people speak about it, but I, don't, I feel like people don't talk about this enough. There's so much importance placed on a pregnant woman, which is amazing, right? Like, we need the attention. One thing I said to my friend after I gave birth, I was like, you know what? I miss the most. I was like, I don't miss my belly because I like having, being able to see my feet, but I miss the attention because like once you give birth, it's like nothing about you and all the attention is put on the baby, which they need it, but also it doesn't hurt to check in on a mom. Um, I also went through postpartum. Aiden's dad wasn't terrible. Um, He was pretty good, actually. I'm not going to, I'm not going to knock him. He was pretty good. He would help me out with the baby. I stayed home with Aiden until I, you know, I was in the corporate job. So I had a nice maternity leave. So I was there like two months and a half because they counted like that week that I, like that I was off before I gave birth as part of the maternity leave. And um, yeah, it was hard for me to adjust from being like a career woman to being the stay at home mom and then having all these expectations like, take care of your baby yeah I was doing that but then like all the other part like now you got to cook and clean and you have to look cute for when your husband gets home and all this other stuff which was a lot for me I was like 25 when I had Aiden um I thank God for the people that used to check on check up on me often like Aiden's godfather Aiden's godmother my best friend they would constantly be checking and um seeing how I was doing mental health wise but I still did um, end up going to therapy. That was like the first time I ever went to therapy. And um, I was put on antidepressants for a little bit. Uh, I took myself off of them. I know that wasn't probably like the best decision, but I didn't like how I was feeling on them. So I just uh, stopped it. Um, as for the breastfeeding, I feel like the hospital dropped the ball a little bit. They should have gotten us like a breastfeeding consultant or somebody that was specialized in that to help, you know, navigate the process. Cause Aiden, honestly, he only breastfed for like a month and a half. I want to say like six weeks. And it was, I, I don't know if mommy was saying it was like something about the anesthesia from the epidural or the Pitocin or something interferes with your milk production, which I don't know how true that is. But she did all those remedios. Did your mom do those for you? Like a chocolate a base de agua and like bacalao soup, which I had never had in my entire life. But apparently that makes you produce milk. Um, but yeah, that was hard for me too. I feel like that was part of the reason why I was like kind of depressed because like the expectation is like you have this 
you're fruitful, you're plentiful, you're abundant, you had this baby, now you're going to feed your baby from your own body. And when that doesn't happen, I feel like that that affects your uh, affects you how you feel your worth as a mother in a way. I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, no, I definitely felt that way because like I that was another thing like that was my plan like I wanted to exclusively breastfeed him but I think because I had like so many like we had so many complications in the birth and like you know obviously they started bottle feeding him right away um it's it's I mean I've heard and I honestly that was my experience like it was harder for him to like because when I would go to the NICU and try because they had me pumping Mm -hmm. so I would go so I would go and like bring you know bring them whatever I pumped or um, well I would give them whatever I pumped and then when I when I would go to see him like I would try to like get him to latch on and he just was like not having it but I think it was obviously I mean you know the flow of an of a a natural nipple and a bottle nipple is like Mm -hmm. totally different and like they get lazy like they don't want to have to work wait did Charles ever get angry when he was like trying to latch on Aiden would cry and oh, get yeah. red. Like, I see no pique tan grande. I used to be like, oh boy, can yeah. somebody come take this child? Yeah, like he would get so mad. And it's like, I'm trying. And I mean, they did have me see a lactation consultant in the hospital. And, you know, she was like, you know, she showed me all the positions, like the football, mm-hmm. you know, like all the positions. And, you know, I I would do it in the office and she's like, okay, well, I mean, he is latching on. And I was like, well, when I do this at home, he doesn't. So clearly he's showing off Mm -hmm. because when I'm at home, he doesn't Mm -hmm. do this. And she's like, you know, she was like, just keep trying. And I was like, I, I'm going to keep trying, but I'm telling you that I'm frustrated. And I think, you know, obviously like all those things like contributed to the fact, like I just, you know, I didn't feel like I was bonding with him enough. And you know, breastfeeding moms, like they say, like, that's your mm-hmm. bonding time, you know, when you're feeding them. And I'm just like, I mean, it's, I don't know, for me, like, it wasn't the same, because I was just like, you know, giving him a bottle, when I wanted to give him my, like, actual mm-hmm. nipple. And um, yeah, I definitely felt like, not like worthless, I don't know if that's the right word, but I definitely felt you were like, living up to the hype of being a mom. Yeah, like, I just felt like, I was supposed, like, my body's supposed to be doing all these things, and it's not. And, like, I think, like, I mean, I wasn't producing a lot of milk. And I think that was also, like, frustrating, because I'm, like, sitting there with, like, the breast pump, and, like, for, like, media hora, and, like, two little ounces come out. And I'm, like, so, like, I think after a week, like, I mean, they say the best is to give them the colostrum after that. Like, I mean, obviously it's fine, but, like, that's where all the nutrients is. So, like, I pumped out, like, all the colostrum, but then after that I was just like, I'm not going to force it because I'm getting frustrated. He's getting frustrated. And at the end of the day, as long as he's fed, like, I don't care how Mm -hmm. it happens. Because, I, you know, he would, like you said, like, he would get so frustrated. Like, let down speak. And I'm like, but I'm trying. Like, like... I'm trying to help you, baby, but it's not happening. Yeah. And and then I would just be like, all right, boy, throw my and give him the bottle because you know. It was hard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> wait, what was it like when you brought your kid home? Like the rest of your family or or people that would go to visit, would they follow your rules that you had for like carrying Charles or you know, preventing him from getting germs and all that stuff? Um Honestly, like, not, like, not that many people came to visit, like, when he was, like, first, I would say, like, the first, maybe three months, like, nobody, like, aside from, like, my immediate family, like, I didn't have any, like, visitors come over, like, even my friends from, like, high school didn't come till he was, like, six months old, um, just because, I don't know if it was my mom that was being overprotective, or me, like, I don't, I don't remember, like, I mean, like I said, it was 12 years ago, but, like, I really don't remember anybody coming, um, like within that time frame. Maybe, um, like my my cousin, like who were like prima hermanas or whatever. Like maybe she came, but she was also there like throughout my entire labor. So it was just like That's you know, nice. and I was there for both. I was there for both of her, um, like her births. 
So it was just like, you know, I lived with my parents and my brother at the time. So it was just like the four mm-hmm. of us and, you know, and Charles. I would say, and I mean, his dad would come. Um, but I didn't really have any like crazy rules, but I also like wasn't even like kind of taking care of myself. Yeah. That makes, like I literally like if I showered, it was because my mother was like, all right, yeah, like, that bueno. I can smell you. Like I can smell you from a mile away. Like clearly you haven't showered in a couple of days. I'm going to grab the, I'm going to grab Charles. I'm going to need you to go I'm, I'm glad you had that support um, from your mom though. Yeah, no, honestly, like, I don't, I don't know what I would do, like, without my, like, my mom and my dad, um, because my dad honestly was, like, when he found out I was pregnant, like, he went crazy, like, he was just like, me nana, no, and it was just like, bro, I'm 20 years old, I'm not, like, 16, um, but, like, after I had Charles, like, that was, like, his pride and joy, like, what, like, my mom, like, was so surprised, because, like, things that he didn't even do with me and my brother growing up, like, he would do for Charles, like, he would feed him, like bathe him, like everything. Like that was his world. Philly, um, I'm going to interrupt the convo. We could come back and finish recording. Is that okay? And we're back. <laughs> we had to go for a little commercial break. Um, So we were discussing before we left off uh, if Philly had any rules that Her family had a hard time accepting when she first gave birth. I was a first time mom and I read all the baby books. And based on things that I've seen from other women giving birth, I was like, I don't want anybody touching my kid with dirty hands. And you have to wear a little little sheet in front of you so you come with your outside clothes and touch my baby. Um, I think around that time there was another, there was a story on the news that a baby got herpes because somebody kissed them on the mouth and I was like yeah I'm not my baby um so my family was okay with it because they know you know but my husband's family had an issue with it they thought I was being bougie with my child and they got very offended I mean some of them came with like cologne like heavy cologne you know what I'm saying and for babies they they're not used to those kind of smells so I felt a certain way I was like don't touch my baby um, so yeah, I mean, I feel like as a first time mom, I feel like a, a lot of people lent us, a, let me support and I appreciate that, but a lot of people don't really consider like checking in, you know? Uh, I, I agree with that. I mean, I think we, like, we just like, you know, we, we were talking in the, like in the previous, um, conversation that like you know all the focus like goes to the baby so like i mean i don't even think like my family even realized that like what i was dealing with was postpartum depression and what's crazy is like my mom actually went through it with my brother mm. so um like you would think that somebody that like went but my mom had like a really severe case like she mm. literally like called the hotline cuz she was about to like she didn't know what she was about to do. Mm-hmm. Um, thankfully, I don't, you know, I never wanted to harm Charles. I just, like I said before, like I could care less. As long as his basic needs were met, like I was good. Um, but yeah, I think like, you know, my, my parent, like they're, I mean, he, Charles is my mom's like only grandchild. And my dad has two other grandchild, like grandchildren. Um, but like he didn't, they didn't grow up with him. So like Charles was like their first like real like grandchild experience. So I think they were really trying to like soak that in and like, not that they like kind of put me to the side, but they just felt like they were helping by like just stepping in and doing where mm-hmm. they saw that I was lacking. Um, so obviously like, obviously I appreciate that. Cause I mean, I'm not, not that I don't think Charles would have been like dead. You know what I mean? Like I would have been able to like figure it out and maneuver it. Yeah. But I, but I do think like them, like, even like I said, like when they used to get home from work, they would like grab him and like, you would give me a, like, give me a moment to like decompress and like figure out like my feelings. So yeah. like, I, I appreciated that, but I do feel like they focus, like they were like, their sole focus was him. Um. So Yeah. Yeah, my mom uh, did a lot of uh, drive-by grandmaing, so she would come 
cook dinner and, um, you know, hang out with the baby and I and then leave because uh, she lived in Jersey. Uh, it was, it, you know, it was helpful. I, I didn't feel as alone, you know. Once I went back to work, though, I remember those first couple of days were rough. I was in the bathroom crying because I missed my baby, even though I felt like it was overwhelming being home with him all the time. So, you know, that that was kind of tough at the beginning. But for the most part, Aiden was a pretty chill kid. Like, he was just happy all the time, uh, eating. He got... Yeah, he got, he grew out of, I don't even think he wore, you know how they have the, the newborn clothes? I think he wore it for a week. He, he went up to like 15 pounds in like a month. By the time I went back to work, he was already 15 pounds. But, um, I was going to ask you, what advice would you give first time moms? Like two, um, one or two, one of two of the major things that you learned that, that you wish you would have known as a first time mom. Um, that it's okay to ask for help. Um, I feel like as first time moms, like we feel like we have to do it all. Um, so yeah, like if you ever feel like overwhelmed, like it's okay to ask for help. Like that doesn't make you less of a mom. It doesn't make you like less worthy of being a mom. Um, I think, you know, your child needs you to be at full capacity. And if that means like taking a couple of hours, like for yourself, um, so yeah, so that's like the two first. So like ask for help. And even if that means like getting out of the house um, and like having your, your you know, your me time. Because when you become a mom, like you get so wrapped up in being a mom that you like lose your identity. Um, so yeah, like, I think, yeah, that was like a two first. I love it. Uh, <laughs> we were, I, the, the, I had Sandy as a guest um, yesterday in the last episode and basically that's what we were talking we were talking about how to balance being a woman a mom a career person a sexual being like we're not just one thing we don't wear just one hat and it's okay to have multiple hats but remember remembering to be centered and be present and balancing is important and that in order to be a good mom you need to make yourself happy first you can't be a great mom i mean you can go through the motions kind of like what you were talking about but if you don't feel at your best mental health wise it's gonna affect in the long run and it can present in your body in different ways um like making you sick uh, you know more than anything uh the piece of advice that I would give first time moms is definitely, I agree with yours to ask for help and, you know, don't feel guilty about needing a break. Like, don't feel guilty about that. It's okay to take a break because that there's no way that you're going to, you know, keep running on empty and be giving your best, like your hundred percent to somebody. Um, and our last question for this session is if you could do anything differently, what would that be from your birth story or postpartum or anything like that? Um, I think I didn't like, I didn't advocate for myself enough, like during my birth. Um, I just felt like whatever they told me, like they needed to do, like I was just signing papers and like, okay, do what you need to do. Um, so yeah, like, I feel like, I mean, I always say like Charles is 12, I'm never starting over, but like, you just never know. So I think like, if a man presents himself and I happen to end up pregnant and be in that situation again, um, I definitely, um, you know, would advocate for myself more like. You know, I follow a bunch of like doulas and they're just like, you know, they don't have to come and check how dilated you are every five seconds the way they yes. do. And I definitely felt like super violated, like them three days that I was there. And it was just like, okay, like, like it didn't change in an hour um, and things like that. Like, I just feel like I want to go in with like a written birth plan because like in my mind, I knew kind of what I wanted. But obviously, like when you're in the motions, like 
you forget. So like, I want to have like a written birth plan and like, make sure that, you know, my OB or midwife or whatever, I, whatever I choose, like, you know, um, honors that birth plan. Um, postpartum, um, I think. I didn't like, even though like I was like, you know, I was going through the motions because of postpartum. Um, I think um, I, I would take my own advice and like, be like, I need help. Like take him for a couple of hours. I'm gonna go just, just, just have a me day or, you know, a couple of hours. So um, yeah, cause I feel like that first, like, I think I got six weeks off postpartum. I can't remember, but it wasn't like much because um, I was working like in a small office at the time. Um, so whatever the disability was at that time, that's all I took and I went right back to work. Um, and I was like all about him um, that entire time. So definitely like taking, you know, not losing myself in that newborn stage i definitely agree with that that um sentiment i actually what you know what's funny felicia i worked <laughs> at a early head start program and all the women there were trained as doulas but for some reason i felt like that was something that was unattainable to me because it wasn't covered by insurance and it seemed very expensive. Not that the services that they provide aren't worthy, but this time around, I would definitely get myself a doula that I was comfortable with and that understood my birth plan. Um, definitely, I don't know if I wanna have kids again, but if I were to do it again, because Aiden's about to be 13 tomorrow, um, if I were to do it again, I would definitely get a doula or a midwife. You know, kind of something more similar to how the birthing experience was before, because I feel I do feel that um, hospital births, even though we had good experiences, for the most part, um, I feel like hospital births are they make it very clinical and very sterile when it's something that's supposed to be beautiful. And yes, there are risks. But I feel like having so much medical intervention when your child is being born into the world has uh, side effects later on in life. So this is the end. I want to thank you so much for your candidness, Felicia, and uh, for being so open and amazing. Um, comadres, you know, follow me at Comadre on the Pod. And you can follow Felicia on IG at... Um, it's my first name, so P H Y L I C I A underscore underscore B E G A. Okay. And if you have any questions at all, you know that you can always send me a comadregram. You can send it to me via DM on the podcast IG or at comadreando at ESCthenetwork.com. Thank you for spending time with your comadres. Billy, thank you, Comadre, for spending time with us and sharing your beautiful story. You're so welcome. This was so great. I'm so happy <laughs> I did it. <laughs> we have to hang out soon. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next episode of Comadreando. Bye.